Now, the whole walk of faith and uh, to live free in Christ, to live in abundance, to live in health, it is a walk of faith. The, the walk of faith is different than the walk in the flesh or walk of feelings and by what you see. The world lives by what they see. If I feel, heal, feel sick, I'm sick. If it looks like bad, it's bad. But the Bible says, God said it in Isaiah 55. He says, my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. The walk of faith is not like the walk of the world. And so it's a whole change of thinking. It's a whole shift in your thinking. It's a paradigm shift in your thinking. If you're going to receive the stuff that God has for you. And God has abundance for you. He has health for you. It's already provided. But it's by faith. And listen, can I just be straight with you as a pastor? My son, my seven-year-old, is in the second grade. And I, ha- uh, I went and sat in his classroom this week because after we had the uh, parent-teacher conference and the teacher said, well, your son, yes, he's a, he's a little star. He's real popular at school. And, but, uh, you know, he kind of comes in and he, he wants to do what he wants to do. And he'll start talking and that sort of thing. I said, okay. Uh, so we had a, a, a heart-to-heart talk, Trey and I. And his mom, we all sat at the kitchen table, had a heart-to-heart talk and uh, told him what our expectation was. And I said, I'll be there in your classroom tomorrow to ensure that you understand what I'm saying. And so I walk in the classroom and when I uh, say, I, you know, I walk in the classroom, this was seven-year-olds. They're all like, you know, waving at me. And, I, and I, my son's like, I said, uh-uh, pay attention, stop talking. And every time he'd get ready to talk to one of his friends, I'd say, hey, you follow me? And I got him straight. Well, I talked to his teacher when they were going off to recess. And she said, Pastor Stokes, she goes, I got to tell you, Trey was a new man today. This was a different child. When he walked in here today, he had a whole new attitude. I said, yes, because we, we had to just set him straight. Let him know what our expectation is. Now, I want to tell you something that, uh, that kind of like that as a parent, as a, as a spiritual parent, as a father. Are you with me? In school, there were kids that, you remember this, there were kids that sat in the back of the class and kind of goofed off. I was one of those kids in high school. I graduated from high school with my father's foot in my butt. You follow me? He helped me get out. And, uh, but in, in college, I excelled at the second time. First time, didn't do too good. Second time, at age 28, I did very well. But because I had a different perspective. The things of God have to be attended to. If kindergartners have to go to school five days a week to learn colors and the days of the week and the month of the year, to walk in the abundance of God, to walk in the freedoms that God has already provided for us, it's going to take your attention. It can't be, if you, you know, I'm not not against television. I like some certain shows myself, but I'm going to tell you, if you make certain shows more in important to you than the, than the gospel. If scandal becomes so important that you understand, and I like the girl, she's cute and pretty clothes, all that sort of stuff. But if I know more about those episodes than I do about the gospels, I can expect scandal in my life and not the freedoms of Christ. So this, it takes a commitment. And I've, I told the Lord, I need, I, no more deaths in my church if I can have anything to do with it. I'll do my part, Lord. I'll do my part. But it's also incumbent on, my, on me to tell you your part if you're going to walk in it. And, and it's not a play thing. You follow me? Some people show up to church when they feel like it. And they can't expect to get the things of God. You can't expect to get out of, out of kindergarten to first grade showing up if you feel like it. And so you have to make a commitment if you want to walk in the freedom that you say you want to be free of. How many of y'all want to be free? Are you with me? Amen. And he's provided that. So can I go through the scriptures and show you a few things? First of all, take a look in 2 Peter. 2 Peter. 2 Peter, the first chapter. Let me show you something because all the things that we say we need, we have already have. Look over in 2 Peter, the first chapter, and look at verse 1. Simon Peter, are you all there? Simon Peter, a bondservant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us. Say, I've got like precious faith. The same faith that the apostles had, you have. Here's how I know that. The same faith that Jesus has, you have. The exact same faith. The way Peter could say that is because you get this faith at salvation. If you're born again, you have the faith of God. You have mountain moving faith right now as a born again believer. Are y'all with me? Okay. Now let's read on. He goes, uh, 
fruit by it, the righteousness of God. In other words, you got it. When you became righteous, you got the same right, uh, precious faith with us by the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Look at this, verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied. Grace is unearned, undeserved, unmerited favor. Peace means, it's the word in the Hebrew, shalom, it's Irene here in the Greek, but it means nothing missing and nothing lacking. Nothing missing and nothing lacking. All of God's peace, nothing missing and nothing lacking. Finances, nothing missing, nothing lacking. Joy, nothing missing, nothing lacking. Are you with me? Whatever it is you need, peace means nothing missing and nothing lacking. Look at this, unmerited favor and nothing missing, nothing lacking be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. So nothing missing, nothing lacking, and unearned favor is multiplied to you. Not added to you, but multiplied to you. How? Knowledge. Knowledge. By something you need to know. If you had a winning lottery ticket in your pocket right now, but didn't know it, what good does that ticket do you? None. You can send your clothes in the wash and wash it. It's what you don't know about what you have that keeps you missing it. Have you been looking for a church that's a part of the grace revolution where the focus is Jesus, his finished work, and not the law? You've been looking for destiny. Destiny 2401 Randall and Road. Sunday service time, 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Bible study, Wednesday night at 7 p.m. For more information, log on to leestokes.org. You've been looking for destiny where the focus is Jesus, his finished work, and not the law. You've been looking for destiny.